This default setting is ruining your PC. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So this video initially started off as me testing if using your iGPU to run your second display could improve performance as yes, running multiple displays can technically harm your FPS. But to be honest, the results really weren't that interesting. Sure, there was a couple of examples that did show a measurable increase by using the iGPU. But when we look at the average across four games, well, the difference is absolutely tiny. Surely nothing worth making a whole video on. And I was about to throw in the towel and then I started digging around in the BIOS and what I found I think is going to shock you and no it's not enabling XMP or doing any type of overclocking. In fact I want you to put what setting you think I changed in the comments right now to see if you get it right as I bet most of you won't. Okay ready? Well we're moving on anyway because on my 7800X 3D system I actually disabled something that many people will tell you not to as apparently it can reduce the maximum clock speeds but I found this to not be the case on my ASRock motherboard and that set is C states. Now, C states essentially control the sleeping or downclocking states of your CPU. So in theory, by disabling it, we're making sure that the CPU is going to be running at its full potential at all times, especially when you use it in combination with the Windows Ultimate Power Plan and set the processor's minimum frequency to 100%. But does this actually work? Well, let's go ahead and find out whether or not it really will improve our performance. Now, real quick, the system I'm using to test this actually has a 7950X3D simulating a 7800X3D by disabling the non-cache cores, a PNY Accelerate RTX 4090, 96 gigabytes of dual channel DDR5 running at 6000 CL30, an 800 gigabyte Optane P5800X boot drive, and four terabyte Kingston Renegade Fury Gen 4 SSD, which was sent to me by Kingston all running on a small form factor Corsair 1000 watt power supply. And the four games we'll be taking a look at are the finals, Baldur's Gate 3, Modern Warfare 2, and finally Cyberpunk 2077. And first starting off with the finals, a new game that I'm really enjoying. And here you can see that, yes, I do have all the various different monitor configurations on here as well. And strangely using the iGPU actually made the 0.1% lows worse in this title. So just moving to one single display on your NVIDIA GPU did lead to a 19% improvement. And I'll also mention that whether you have the monitor unplugged or just turned off, it does seem like it's basically the same. So that's what I did with my C states results. And here we actually got a further 8% improvement, which is overall 29% higher than our worst result. But these results were a little bit weird. So let's move on to the next game. And in this game, we can see that actually using the iGPU did help. But if we take a look at the C states option, it's actually giving us around 22% higher 0.1% lows versus the result directly comparable to it, the NVIDIA card with just one display and C states on. But now moving on to the next game here and we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and strangely enough, this game doesn't seem to really care what settings or monitors you use. Basically, all the results are the same. And yeah, that's gonna happen with some games from time to time. It's just the way they're coded and it is what it is. But moving on to the final game here and this one is Cyber Cyberpunk 2077, and here the results do change based on your settings, and overall the C states off does give us a 17% improvement in the 0.1% lows versus the C states on. But now moving on to the four game average, and overall we can see that C states off is actually around 12% faster than the worst result when it comes to 0.1% lows, although I will mention that the average and 1% lows are pretty similar between all of them, and it does give us an 11% improvement versus the comparable result of C states on using the same settings. So yeah, that's a decent improvement, but it's nothing, you know, too groundbreaking. However, if we do remove the Call of Duty results as those didn't really make any difference at all, now we're talking about 14% higher, 0.1% lows on the C states off versus C states on, and overall 17% higher, 0.1% lows versus the worst result. And also here you can see that the 1% lows are actually noticeably a little bit better this time around, but once again, it's nothing 
too crazy. So I think this does go to show that a combination of different settings that give you maybe 5% here and 10% there can definitely add up to be quite a bit in the end, but also C states can have a pretty substantial impact on your minimum frame rates or maybe the stuttering that you might see in a game. It seems like for some reason using the 7800X 3D, not allowing it to go into those sleep modes does make for a more smooth gaming experience, at least on my system. I mean, keep in mind, everybody's system is different. You might have a different build of Windows. You might be on Windows 10. I'm on Windows 11 Pro for workstations. You might be on Windows 11 Home, Windows 11 Pro, Windows 11 Enterprise. There's a lot of different factors at play here. You could have a different CPU, a different GPU. So I can't promise the results will be the exact same for everyone. Or maybe you have a bloated Windows install or a very clean one. Of course, all those factors are going to make a difference, but it does seem like to me it probably won't hurt and it might help. And in fact, it might help a lot in terms of reducing your stuttering in game, which is going to make the game not only feel a lot better, but it could also lead to a situation where let's say, for example, you get a bad, nasty stutter in the middle of a competitive game. Well, that could actually throw off your aim. Whereas if you do something like this and it actually fixes the problem, that stutter could be something that actually never even happens, meaning that you could actually play the game better. So so if you guys found this interesting or helpful at all, I would really appreciate if you dropped a like on this video, put in the comments down below what you think the best settings are to get the least amount of stutter. And of course, share the video with your friends as well. And if you have any other games or settings you would like me to test, please put that in the comments below. And of course, guys, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.